market that I want to make sure I do today for you is the foreign exchange markets or comparative currencies because these seem a lot more complicated than they actually are. There are some really good tricks for this. Types of questions that you might see, and there's a good possibility that you'll have a free response on this. I don't know for sure, but it's, it's, a, it's a strong probability. Dealing with trade. What happens if we have a change in interest rates that depresses or appreciates one currency relative to the other? Capital flows. Again, interest rates. If you have higher interest rates, then that means people are going to want to invest money because they get a higher return, so you'll have money flowing into a country that has relatively higher interest rates. And also, you may see some examples with tourism. And this is happening in the United States right now, where you have a lot of tourists, for example, from Europe coming to the United States because they get a lot more for their money because the dollar is so much cheaper. We're seeing a lot of money flowing from Canada, for example, and this is kind of a new thing for us. So you may see a question dealing with one of those contexts, and it's always relative currencies, relative interest rates. There's no absolute. If we're talking about one in relation to the other, it's always a relative market. The first thing that you have to be able to do is interpret what the question is asking. Let's use the idea of European tourism. So we have the euro appreciating relative to the dollar because the dollar is very weak right now. We have a lot of European tourists coming to the United States. So what we need to do is look at the euro market in relation to the dollar market. Now, there's been a lot of confusion about how exactly you label your axes to make sure that these are not backwards. Let's do the euro market first. Euro market, and then we'll look at the dollar market. Now, if we're looking at euro, we want to start with the dollar price of the euro. That's what this means, okay, dollar price of the euro. If this is the one on the bottom, it goes on the bottom. Euro, that's your quantity, okay? Bottom, bottom, that's your market. It's all consistent. Coming over to the dollar market, again, we want the euro price of the dollar. How much does dollar cost in terms of what you're spending in euro? Dollar is on the bottom of that fraction, it goes on the bottom down here. Bottom, bottom, market. Nice and consistent. If you remember that rule, you will not get these backwards. Not getting them backwards is half the battle. If you can do this much, you can probably get the rest of the problem right. Now, we need supply and demand curves for each of these. Oops, don't do that, that's bad. I was just testing. One of the questions that I've had about this is, if we're talking about dollars and that this is a dollar market, then how come supply is not vertical? This is not dollars supplied by the Fed. This is dollars that are supplied for the purposes of currency exchange. And that depends on the relative price. So just like other supply and demand curves, supply slopes up, Demand slopes down. Supply is not vertical because this is not the money market. This is the dollar market relative to the euro. So it's a completely different ball game. You don't want to get those confused. Now, looking at tourism, what we said was that the dollar is weak and people are coming to the United States. Now, how do we represent that here? We want to start with labeling our equilibrium. So this is our price. This is our quantity. Now, if Europeans want more dollars, then the supply of euros increases because they need to supply more euros to buy more dollars. So what we're going to see in the euro market is that supply is going to shift to the right, which puts downward pressure on price and increases the quantity. And 
I'll say that again. If they need more dollars, they're going to increase the supply of euros to buy more dollars. So supply has increased. Here's the other trick to getting these problems right. If we have an increase in one curve, we have an increase in the other curve. I have never seen this backwards. They're both going to move in the same direction. Because if we're increasing the supply of euros to buy more dollars, we're buying more dollars. We have an increase in the demand over here. So what happens? This is our original equilibrium right here. And what do we see now? We have our new quantity. We have our new price. Explain this. What is the net result? Because you have a higher supply of euros, we have downward pressure on the price of the euro, which means the euro is now depreciating relative to the dollar. Because demand has jumped in this market, the price of the dollar is up. What you would expect to have happen with this kind of a shift across both markets and always draw them side by side because it's so much easier for you to tell what you did and easier for a reader to interpret. Downward pressure on the price of the euro, euro is depreciating relative to the dollar. Upward pressure on the price of the dollar in the dollar market means the dollar is appreciating relative to the euro. Now what would that translate into in terms of interest rates? Upward pressure on price, you would expect upward pressure on interest rates. This is going to, in turn, attract more foreign capital. So there are lots of implications here. But know your starting point. Know the market that is causing the initial shift. Always go left to right. Initial shift, resultant shift, they move either both increase or both decrease. You will not get these wrong.